On 26 miles from Melbourne, oh, come along with me. Down to the morning in Peninsula and Franklin by the sea. Hi, and thanks for joining me on Frankston TV. I'm Ellie Cole. The clip you just saw was another brilliant entry in the Focus on Frankston video competition called Summer Days. Thanks to Larry Chu for those fantastic images of Frankston. Also on today's episode, we are going to take a quick look through Frankston's new aquatic and recreation centre. Do our version on street talk on the streets of Frankston. Experience all of the colour on Pets Day Out and I'm going to finish off my tale about competing at the Paralympics. First though, let's hear from Will Deeg from the Asian Pacific Group. He's going to tell us about his company's big move to Frankston and his vision for the city. Yeah, I think Frankston's been pretty well known to the group and in particular my family for a number of years. We've, we've done a fair bit of development down on the Mornington Peninsula itself. And the Peninsula Centre is a building that we've always watched. Yeah, I think Frankston, five years from now, you're going to see a very different place. You've got the, the $50 million aquatic centre uh, under construction at the moment. You've got southeast water moving into a new building. Uh, there's a number of town planning applications that have been lodged as we speak, from office to residential. So I think it's you know the next Morty Alec or the next St Kilda. If you looked at you know St Kilda 10 years ago, it was a pretty um, undervalued market and if you look at Morty Alex say five years ago now Morty Alex hip and boutique and it's got cafes and so I think that's what's coming to Frankston and we are very supportive of um, anyone else developing down there um, anyone else um, putting up more towers whether it's office or residential or hotel um, I think you know the government came out on the weekend as part of the new budget and said they're going to spend over $100 million on the, on the train line, upgrading the, the travel time, the stations all up and down um, the, uh, the strip from Frankston th right through to um, Patterson Lake. So that can only help. I mean, if you can get an express train in under an hour and you can be going home at night to that beautiful beach and living on the coast uh, and you're into the city in under an hour, I mean, it, it can only be a good thing. So I think the future is rosy. Hello and welcome to the site of Frankston's next major development. I'm Peter Mitchell. Construction is now well underway on the new $49 million Regional Aquatic Recreation Centre in Frankston. The centre is due to open mid-2014, will employ approximately 150 to 200 staff and provide first-class health, fitness and wellness services to the regional community. The construction of the 50 metre Olympic pool is starting to take shape with future milestones including the pouring of the concrete for the pool base and sides. The centre provides an indoor heated Olympic size 50 metre swimming pool offering 10 swimming lanes. A very popular activity at the centre will be the Learn to Swim program. The centre offers dedicated Learn to Swim pools and will provide quality swimming lessons for all ages, from infants to adults, and hopefully we'll see some future swimming champions start from our Learn to Swim school. 
The world first Aquasphere family raft ride will debut at the Regional Aquatic Recreation Centre in Frankston. The feature water slides are sure to appeal to many residents and will become one of the city's major attractions for visitors to the Frankston region. If relaxation is more your thing, the centre also offers a large warm water exercise pool which is ideal for hydrotherapy and aquatic rehabilitation. The Aquatic Recreation Centre will also have a dedicated health and wellness centre offering a wide range of relaxation, massage, beauty, dietitian and clinical services available to centre members and the general public. On the first level, accessible by stairs or lift, will be a large state-of-the-art gymnasium equipped with the latest fitness technology. There are also three separate exercise program rooms offering group fitness classes, yoga and pilates and cycle fitness classes. To keep informed of the centre's progress, services and employment opportunities, visit the Frankston City Council website and email aquaticcentre at frankston.vic.gov.au to join the centre database. I hope you enjoyed this tour and I look forward to seeing you at the new Regional Aquatic Recreation Centre. I'm Peter Mitchell. That was the new Peninsula Aquatic and Recreation Centre, which is currently being constructed. Now let's head out onto Wells Street to find out what people like about this historic shopping strip, which is undergoing a rebirth. Well, I work in Frankston, so we come sort of down here a fair bit, I guess. Yeah, we often go to the movies here. Um, mainly go to the movies with mates, go get Nando's for lunch or something, go bowling. Wells Street was virtually in the town outer. Um, until the railway came through. When the railway came through 1st of August in 1882 to Frankston, this was a huge, a huge deal. It opened up Frankston for um, people coming to visit, coming on holidays, um, people coming to the end of the line virtually to go down the beach. And, of course, they came out of the station and they went down Well Street. Frankston was virtually the tour rack of Melbourne. They advertised, uh, they used to advertise it as um, fabulous Frankston, part of marvellous Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, I usually come to the cinemas here or we go bowling just at strike. Something to eat, I like the coffee club, a mambo. Yeah, anywhere really. <laughs> So Becky, tell me about Miss Velvet. Sure, Kim, love to. Uh, well, Miss Velvet is a safe place for women to be styled mm -hmm. and to gain confidence. And what we really love to do is empower women to be the best versions of themselves. So Well Street in particular, mm -hmm. you grew up in Frankston? I did, I'm actually a Frankston girl from way back. And when I grew up, Well Street was actually the hub of fashion. So I was really passionate about bringing back boutiques to Well Street. Yeah, well, yeah. I think you've done an amazing job of creating a destination here. Thank you. And especially with the service you provide all of your customers. Yeah, yeah, no, we love it. And tell me about some key looks or some key trends that I should know about. We're all about smart shopping. Mm -hmm. So we like to maybe pick one dress and show it how it can be worn multitude of ways. I'm Rob Graham from Karingal Vet Hospital and you're watching Frankston TV. Yeah, the weather's really good. Uh, it was a bit dodgy to start with and we were a bit concerned that people might stay at home, but uh, it's turned out pretty nice out here. We're just out here at Pets Day Out doing some free vet checks and uh, catching up with a few of the, the local folks. One, two, three. It still hasn't, oh, he's sort of, he's waking up slowly. Oh, he's having a bit of a stretch. Oh. Guess what? This is this song I wrote about him, and this might get him away. This is the Willy Wombat dance. Now Willy Wombat, sweet as could be, he likes to eat lots of meat. He likes to sleep all day long, but look what happens when we sing his song. And do the Willy Wombat, one, two, three, the Willy Wombat, wake up Willy. The Willy Wombat, there's no denying That we can't wake him up if we're not trying Oh, he's looking pretty awake now, isn't he? Look at him! Now Willy Wombat's dancing around We got him out of his hole in the ground We got him swinging, having lots of fun He'll keep on swinging till the day is done If you 
And the Willy Wombat twist and shout The Willy Wombat, let's shake it up now The Willy Wombat, and everyone stomp their feet And wake him up with that stomping beat Everyone stomping now Look at the animals stomp Welcome back. I'm here with local businessman Jim Schaefer. Jim, tell us about the Greater Frankston Business Chamber. I will, Ellie. The chamber's been around since 1955. It's the peak commercial body in the Frankston region that supports a number of SMEs. Um, our key functions are advocacy. Uh, we work with the council and state government on local issues, business development and uh, in education. I'm Sam from Pizza Counting and you're watching Frankston TV. Um, Pizza Counting has been operating in Seaford for nearly three years now. Tonight we won an award uh, in the service category for the Alan Richards Business Awards. Hi, I'm Lucia from Bumatic. I'm here this evening with the Frankston Business Chamber's networking meeting and I've created this beautiful delight in our fabulous oven just for everyone tonight to enjoy. Hi, I'm Laura from Storage King Caram Downs and I'm here supporting the Frankston Business Chamber of Commerce Networking Night and I'm having a ball here meeting all new people. Hi, my name's Debbie Manuel from Ray White Chelsea. I'm here supporting the Network Night at Good Guys, having a great time. Prices down, down, down. Hi, I'm Tanya from the Good Guys in Frankston, here supporting the Frankston Business Chamber. Come down and see me for a good deal. from the Good Guys Frankston and we're here tonight hosting the Frankston Business Chamber monthly meeting. How important is it to have meetings like this? Getting local business owners and employees together to network and promote each other's businesses. It's, uh, it's fantastic. We have a strong community partnership program um, through Open Family and Pinkoff. Uh, supporting a, um, an outreach worker on the streets of Frankston and we're also heavily involved in Jamie Oliver's Ministry of Food which is really about teaching people to prepare food in a healthy and an engaging and enjoyable way. Um, so yeah, and we also really like getting involved in uh, local community organisations. We help lots of junior sporting clubs and, uh, and preschools and some of the smaller organisations that are always looking to fundraise. Um, so I got offered a scholarship at AIS and I knew that you know some of the world's best athletes train there and I'd get a lot of support there. So I decided, yep, yeah, pretty much two days after they offered it to me that I was going to take the opportunity um, and move to Canberra without my family and really live outside of my comfort zone. Anyway, I arrived at AIS and I was living in an environment with gold medalists and I was you know eating with them and you know sharing accommodation with them and training with them. And I was really exposed to a very different world. It really surprised me the amount of effort that goes from getting a silver in Beijing to getting a gold in London. You know, the amount of effort that has to go into that. That the London Paralympics was a time where, you know, a lot of issues in my life all came together and shaped me into a very resilient person um, and a very strong willed person. You know, when you're competing for 10 days, it's very hard to have as much energy on day 10 as you did in day one. And I think that's where a Paralympic Games it all comes down to mental toughness. It doesn't matter how much you've been physically training. If you're not mentally tough, you're not gonna make it. You know, I went to the Paralympic trials with a lot of expectation on me. I was an AIS athlete, you know, Australian swim team captain, um, and all these medals behind my name and a lot of expectation heading into London. Everyone knew that I was going to make the team because I'd been training so hard. You know, I was looking really good in the water. I had huge muscles on me. I looked like Arnie Schwarzenegger. But, um, you know, I went into the trials and I qualified in my very first race, which is so exciting for me. You know, it was a really tough time after the trials because I came home and my coach had to resign, unfortunately, from the AIS. So, you know, I was heading into the 
world's most important competition and something that I've been training for since I was three years old um, without a coach. So that wasn't exactly ideal. However, they um, AIS employed a new coach for me. Um, he was, you know, a local coach. I'd seen him around before, and I knew who he was. Um, and his name was Steve, and he was such a great guy. And Steve was one of those guys that put a different spin onto training and was a really positive guy and made me laugh. And I really felt like heading into the games, I had a collaborative effort with my coach. And that's really what you need. You need that support like that. One day, Steve said to me that, you know, he never misses a training session in his life. And I'm thinking, you know, this guy's the greatest guy in the world. He never misses training. And then the next morning I went to training and Steve didn't turn up. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, coaches, <laughs> you know, they're just making stuff up all the time. So I got in and trained and I went to the gym after my huge breakfast. And then I had the CEO of Swimming Australia call me and say that my coach had had a stroke in the middle of the night. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, you know, I was ragging on him this morning about his commitment to the program and he's had a stroke, the poor guy. And I didn't know what to do with myself, obviously. You know, I wasn't focused for the rest of the week. So I had to actually move to Queensland with two days notice um, into a house that Swimming Australia owned. Heading into the Sunshine Coast, I was in a program where they trained sprint-based specific work. And I was training for a 400 when I was at AIS. And all of a sudden, my whole training program had been changed six weeks out from the Games. So my second event of the competition was um, the 100 metres backstroke and that was really exciting for me because I'd done three years of backstroke work and I was sick of backstroke and I just wanted to get it over and done with. So I was really excited to just jump in and do my race. Here's a special moment for Ellie. And then I, I walked out onto pool deck thinking this is it, eight years of training is going to be over and done with in five minutes time. You know, I'm going to be in the cool down pool and I might be a gold medalist, I might not be. I have no idea what's about to happen. She's the fastest qualifier. Can this be her moment? I knew that if I had swung my first lap and did my tumble turn in front of everybody else that I would win the race because I'm a back end swimmer, which means that my last 50 is better than my first 50. Away. And everyone else usually, you know, fatigues and dies off a little bit, but I usually power through. Watching Ferelli, she got probably the best of the start, although Millwood started very well alongside her. So I thought, I'm just going to turn in front of everyone and hold on for dear life. <laughs> so I started the race, um, cool, calm and collected, you know, stayed within my race plan, did my tumble turn, had a bit of a sneaky look to the girl next to me who was my main competitor. And um, she was right next to me and I was thinking, great, you know, she's going to die off and I'm going to win this. So within the first 50 metres, I knew I'd won the race just from that alone because I knew my other competitors so well. And I thought, okay, I know I've won this race, I'm just going to try and break the world record now. And I knew that the world record holder was sitting in the stands and I would have loved to have done it in front of her. But Ellie has taken control now. Ellie Cole of Australia, ready to win gold with 15 metres to go. She's got her body length clear. This has been a masterful performance. She's had to deal with champions all through her life. And now she's a champion as well. She's a gold medalist. Gold to Ellie Cole of Australia. One minute, 9.42. People always think it's the most exciting moment of your life, but to be honest, it's the most relieving moment of your life, just to win. I was so relieved. Ellie, you've done it. That was wonderful. Ellie Cole, she is such a character, such a wonderful team leader. I walked up on the metal dice and I looked across at my mum and she was bawling her eyes out and <laughs> it made me laugh. I was laughing on the dice because of that. And um, she got herself so worked up that she had to seek medical attention. <laughs> an, an ambulance, a paramedic had to go and see her in the grandstands. Ellie Cole for Australia, 20 years of age. So my 100 metres freestyle race, you know, I stood up on the blocks and I knew that it was going to be the last time I was ever going to race my hero again, so I was very upset. But Natalie the toy. I didn't once go into the race thinking that I could win it. A little bit out on her own, really. Um, so I only breathe on the one side, and the side that I was breathing on wasn't on Natalie's side. Away. Ellie Cole seemed to get away pretty well, and Ellie Cole is in the mix well and truly. I was swimming the race, and, you know, in the last 50, I was breathing to one side and I couldn't see Natalie, and I just assumed that I was coming second. I'm, I'm thinking in the race, 
Sweet, I'm coming second right now in 100 meters freestyle, which I don't even swim. That's pretty good. So I just wanted to stay in front of the girl who was next to me. So I was breathing to my one side, saying, yeah, I'm coming second. This is amazing. Can Ellie do a Matt Cowdery? I think she can. She's finishing very strongly. Natalie Detoy joins in the chase. Ellie Cole of Australia in front. This will be huge if she can win the 100 free as well as the 100 back. She hits the wall. Gold to Australia. Gold to Ellie Cole. Magnificent swim. Oh, Ellie, that was superb. And I touch the wall and I hear my mum just go ballistic. So that's when I knew that I'd won a silver medal. And then I look up onto the um, diving blocks and on the diving blocks it had um, one light would illuminate if you'd won gold, two lights if you won silver and three lights if you won bronze. And I looked up and I saw one light and I'm thinking, nah, there is a fault in this block. What is going on? <laughs> so I still hadn't believed that I'd won. From hearing my mum scream and from seeing that light, it still didn't occur to me that I could have beaten Natalie de Troyes. Like, it just didn't occur to me. And I look over at the, at the scoreboard and I saw that I'd won. And to be honest, it was very exciting for me because it was unexpected. And I laughed when I won. Like, most people don't laugh when they win a Paralympic gold medal. But I was just so happy and it's so unexpected that I just had a bit of a laugh. And I was like, yeah, good on you, Ellie. You gave myself a bit of a pat on the back. <laughs> and then I looked at Natalie and felt terrible. I'm sure that will mean so much to Ellie Cole and they're a special coming together of two champs. Annabelle, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to start with Ellie because that was one of the surprises of this, mate. What a sensational swim. Yeah, that was definitely a big shock. You know, I've never been 100 freestyler before and I don't know what changed then, but um, I was a bit worried after this morning's swim because I swam a 104 and it really hurt. So I just went out there and did my own race plan tonight. And actually, it didn't really hurt. I was just, I, I had so much adrenaline. I just, yeah sprinted back home and touched the wall and I had my mother screaming so I knew that I'd won. <laughs>